<laughs> there may be a new trend in the workplace, at least in Silicon Valley, called biohacking. So first and foremost, what is biohacking? It is, quote, according to QZ.com, where practitioners use data about themselves and their environment to perfect their daily routine of eating, sleeping, working, and exercising for optimal performance. Now, the success of the approach is still yet to be determined, and I guess it's been going on for quite some time, at least in Silicon Valley. There's a number of companies that have done it. One uh, in particular, before we get to the company where this article is based upon, uh, the CEO of Bulletproof, Dave Asprey, he's been doing it for two decades. He spent over 300 grand on biohacking his own body, and he plans to live 180 years old, okay? Now, the company, uh, according to this article that they wrote about, Nutribox, they are a company that makes brain supplements in San Francisco. They have now started this collective fasting, 36 hours fast, every Tuesday. And according to them, it has helped their company culture and their employees, there's nine employees. Their employees look forward to it. Some of them are, are, are jump-starting it, doing 60-hour uh, fasts. And he also says that it's their most successful day of the week. That Tuesday is their most productive, successful work day of the week. Now, according to Dave, the guy that's been doing it, the CEO of Bulletproof, he's uh, the one that has been doing it for two decades. He says that in, in his work environment, their culture, the executives and some of the employees, it's not mandatory, um, but it's encouraged, that they use heart rate variability sensors before big meetings to try to take themselves out of fight or flight decision making so they can be more calculated and, and not so reactionary. And that they also, he did also say that there is some, while to be self-aware and to have the data to be your best self, that there is, there is a fine line. He says here, the CEO of Bulletproof, he says, inevitably there are ethical and human resource concerns that come with staff fasting, and some of them are gender related. Even if a fast is optional, employees may feel pressured to take part. If they can't, perhaps because of an illness or pregnancy, the employee could be forced to reveal private medical information to the employer. He goes on to say that it's definitely not a good idea for people that have once suffered an eating disorder or currently battling an eating disorder, he says, which tend to affect women more than men. And he says, of course, there are certain times of the month for women when fasting is much harder. And there's more ethical things that we can talk about, but thoughts, five words or less. My biohack is pizza. <laughs> Snacking trumps hacking. Nice. Yes, it does. <laughs> How is hangry better? I'm conflicted. Really? Why are you yes. conflicted, Sam? What are the two sides going on in there? I. I love the idea of uh, trying to be your best self and the betterment of yourself and your your uh, your culture at work. If you're whether you're an employee or whether you're the executive, of course, I don't think it should be mandatory. And I understand the repercussions of of people feeling that because other people are doing it that they should somehow doing it, whether it's subconscious or not. But I I like the idea of of trying to be your best self. Um, yes. I just think that there needs to be parameters set, and but I think it's worth exploring. My point is, I think this is definitely worth exploring. We have here, someone had Soylent. Soylent is, you know what that no. is? No. Soylent Green is people! Uh, Soylent, based on the idea of Soylent Green, which is, uh, you know, Charlton Heston finds out it's people, but essentially it's just something that you drink that has all the nutrients in it that your body needs. You don't have to have meals anymore. So Soylent Whoa. is something that they've been doing in Silicon Valley, which in, in Silicon Valley, not made of people like it is in the movie. Hate to spoil it, but it's been 40 years. Um, but anyways, it's just, you drink it, and it doesn't make you lose weight. It's not like a weight loss shake or a protein shake. It's just essentially the nutrients your body needs, which folks in Northern California who are looking for increased efficiency at all time in their mm -hmm. computer programming and their platform programming, like, they are jizzing over this because it gets wow. your body becomes the computer and the problem to solve. But I, then you don't get to like get the satisfaction of eating, right? Which I love. Yeah, yeah of course, because we're all. I think we're all foodies here. Mm -hmm. I would say. Oh, um, what? I, there are elements of this that I really like. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the idea of resetting your body like a computer and just kind of, you know, rebooting and checking in. That's an idea that I really like. So, and and I think that there's a way to do that with a little bit of fasting. However, this is an extreme, but what we see a lot of times is that this is kind of one end of the spectrum and we can start implementing this sort of thing into our workday if we so choose to a lesser extent because this is going to be, this is the example, these are the guys that are um, really at the forefront of this and they wouldn't probably expect people that are interested to just go full out 60 hours right away. But I do think that there is a benefit to 
cleansing your body, uh, to really making an effort to check in. And I was very fascinated with the idea of looking at your body like a machine because like the heart rate and everything is yeah, fascinating. Yeah, to me. it really is interesting. Um, and we all we already know how our body can adapt to so much. Um, so I like that this is sort of putting it to the test. Now living to 180, I don't even know if I would want to do that necessarily because everyone else you know, know. is dead. Oh, that sounds um, great. You don't think that through, you're just right. sad and lonely, like drinking your giant. Soylent, like, no. Nadine, but, what do you think? Sorry, like go ahead. It. But yeah. that basically, okay. long, long, long story short, I like it, I think I would be fine with implementing something. Nadine, would yeah. you do something like this? Um, I, I think I already do a little bit mm -hmm. like this. I'm always just kind of, you know, every couple months keeping in tune, seeing if I need to do ad more nutrients, whatever it is. So I really want that shake that they're creating. There's, oh, I think there's some Nadine. over there. That sounds great, I'm on that. But yeah. I think that when they do start to implement it into other companies, I feel like the reason why it's working for this one, because there's only nine people. Right. Yep. <laughs> so it's like a little family and you guys are like, ah, oh, Brett, you didn't, you know, you ate today, you had your carrots, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, shame. smack you. Like one of those things where, yeah, shame, shame. <laughs> Um, so I think it would, there would have to be ways to implement it, and I think it would be a huge HR disaster if it was like for a company of a thousand people. Oh yeah, and no, a thousand people are not eating on a Tuesday is just a thousand yeah, people in like it means Iowa. a thousand people are revolting on our right amount of revolution yeah. by like the end of the day. I don't understand how fasting makes you better, and a lot of this seems so placebo-y. So because you believe in it, and we That's did a story a on the main show mm -hmm. the other day. Point about how like all those they like it isn't like you know you see what are those like um little mind games the lumosity and all that mm -hmm. stuff are there they found out that what makes that improve your IQ isn't that the performance of those activities is good for your brain it's that if you believe it makes oh, you yeah, smarter it actually yeah. does make you smarter 100% so i think especially in silicon valley it's more of a pack mentality that will of these people who are so focused on algorithms working. Yeah, and that, it's like Tuesday's our best day. I agree. So Tuesday will but always like, be dude, our best day. I, the worst I'm at is when I have an eating. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't fast either. I've tried, like in swimming days, there was some, we, we played around so many different experiments where you would go like protein heavy and then like a day without anything. So you're starving for carbohydrates and then you'd eat carbohydrates and you're supposed to have all this excess amount of energy. So as an athlete, I went to a place in Colorado Springs called the Olympic Training Center where that's exactly what you do. Well, what do they so, do at the Olympic Training Center? What are you, you, what are you, oh, training, you're, for? What are you they training for? <laughs> but when you're Anything there, specific? you're there for about a week, and you're there specifically to better yourself as an athlete. So you are hooked up to different heart monitors. You are at a very higher altitude, so you're training um, at, at a different altitude than, than what you're used to. And it was really fascinating. So I like the idea of playing around with things. And I also like the idea of looking at your heart rate, especially if you're making decisions, um, to, to learn if you make a more calculated decision that's more thought provoking and maybe more even um, compassionate when you're at a calmer heart rate than one that's maybe like intense and reactionary. I think that's very beneficial. What I will say, and I think the article brought this up, it was either this article or a different one where just um, the slippery slope begins when how much control can a uh, an executive have? Like, should an executive have uh, the access to know, you know, different heart rates and right. things about their employees? Especially because even if they say it's not going to affect maybe the way that they perceive your value in the company, it could subconsciously mm -hmm. affect you know your promotions yeah. or even mm -hmm. just your job performance. So I don't know. I very sci-fi. It's yeah. like a yes. sci-fi premise. I'll go like, on record. You don't want to be an executive getting in between me and my bagels. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. You just don't want to be that person. Copy that. That's it for us today. Big round of applause for Nadine. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Yay. Where do we see you? After Buzz TV, After right? After Buzz TV, yep. Where can we, now we'll put a Chiron up there, but yeah. uh, is it, what's the website? Uh, it's just AfterBuzzTV. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Okay. So you can just and go on Twitter. there and search me, and then you can find me at Nadine DP and the number three. Yay! So, we yeah. love having you. You're going to have to come guys. back. Thank you, guys. Yes, I would love to. And we'll see, yes, okay, Grace, you can clap. We'll see you next <laughs> time on Pop Sugar.